Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 88 and in this episode I will show you 35 new features in 18 different Google Apps so without further ado let's jump in. Let's start with the YouTube app on Google TV. When you open the app and keep it idle for few minutes it will start its own screensaver mode which is not related to the screensaver of the device itself. Once the screensaver mode starts it will show you a slideshow of photos collected from different YouTube videos with a message at the bottom left corner saying press up to play. Once you do this it will show you the video source directly on YouTube. Next, YouTube music. Now when you go to the library and then tap on new, you have the ability to create a new radio directly from here which is much easier. Plus, when you start the process, now you have the ability to search for the artist and instead of only scrolling endlessly like before. Now let's talk about Google Messages. The first change is the new Material 3 design progress bar when you record voice messages. So let me show you how it looks. You will see a much bigger cursor and a gap between the timeline and the cursor when you move it like this. The second change when you go to the emoji picker of Google Messages and try to search for GIFs you will see this carousel with a lot of filters to narrow down your search easily and the same applies to the stickers. This will take us to Gboard which also improved the way you search for GIFs. So for example when I go to the emoji picker then Jeff you will see here I have the word birthday in the text field and that's why I'm getting AI suggestions based on my words in addition to the normal ones when I delete the word and then put something else go again to the same place you will see now the filters are different next Google contacts the first change is the rename of the fix and manage tab to organize and when you go there you will see all the options are in a list view instead of the grid view like before. Plus the search bar is still accessible from this tab which wasn't the case before. I couldn't find any new features but it looks different. On the Pixel Watch the contact style got a small visual tweak. Now the contacts button is gray instead of light blue like before. Now let's talk about Google Calendar and it got a very handy feature. When you tap on the month you will get this redesigned picker that will show you the full month view with the events and tasks you have on the calendar plus a carousel to quickly jump to the month you want and here is how it animates and it will show you here the year as well to know which year you are currently navigating. When you switch to the month view for example you will only see the carousel. Next. Google Maps. The first change is the ability to create collaborative lists to organize something with your friends. To achieve this you can go to the saved tab then new list. You can give it an icon, a name, a description and activate the shared option. You can allow the customized list order using this toggle and then tap the plus button to add more places. Once you hit save it will show you the share sheet to send it to others. I already have a list so let me show you how it works. The first thing I can do is to add more places. I can interact with the items by tapping and holding on the heart button and choose one of these reactions or I can add a note. Others will be notified immediately once I do any change to see what's new. The second change is on the Pixel Watch and now the tile has a new button called Recents instead of Search which will take you right away to the most recent searches plus the ability to start a voice search, keyboard search or access the map. Next, the Play Store. For some reason Google reverted back to the same search bar at the top and removed the search tab entirely so I'm not sure if this decision is based on people's feedback or they were testing the feature temporarily before the final rollout so please let me know in the comments if you encountered the same thing. But what's new here is the automatically categorized ratings and reviews using AI. When you scroll down to this section you will see these automatically created topics with the AI logo on top of them. When you go inside you will have even more filters to narrow down your search if you are looking for something very specific. On top of this you have more filters at the top like the ratings, critical, positive or all of them. The third and last change is under the Play Store settings and then purchase verification and the only method we have right now is the biometric verification which means we no longer have that password option. And from here you can also change the frequency from always every 30 minutes or never. Keep in mind that you have to enter the password only for the first time when you turn on the switch but later on you can use your fingerprint, pin code or face unlock. Next, Google Chrome. The first change is in iOS. 
Google replaced the previously used Chrome Sync for iOS with a simple sign into your Google account to sync your activities across all your devices. And for you to access the feature, you can tap the profile menu, then sync. And here you'll see all the data you can synchronize with other devices. You can sync everything or choose individual items. And later, if you want to sign out and turn off sync, you can use this button. The second change is the updated permissions manager. If the website asked for access to your microphone, camera, location, etc., you will get a pop-up window to allow this time, allow on every visit or don't allow. When you compare this to the current situation, all you can do here is the ability to turn the permission on or off, but now you have the flexibility to choose the frequency as well. The third and last change is the ability to create, save, and sync your tab groups with other devices. To achieve this, select all the tabs you want, right click, then click add tabs to new group. It will give you the option to give it a name, color, and turn on the save option. When you do this, your tab group will be permanent and you will get access to it from other devices. But keep in mind, these saved tab groups will be accessible from the desktop version on other devices, but not mobile phones. Next, Google app. And if you are an iOS user, now you have the ability to chat with Gemini from within the Google app. You will see two tabs at the top, one for the normal search and the other one for Gemini. I didn't know that this existed, so I thought of sharing it with you. The second change, when you use the voice search, now you have a section for the recent history and trending topics. Tapping on any of them will take you to the relevant Google search page. Next, Google Lens. The first change is the ability to save your Google Lens search history to your Google account. When you open the app, you will see this banner that will allow you to turn on the feature immediately. And once you do this, you can get back to your Google Lens search history by scrolling down and turn on the switch. And here you will see your recent history over here. So let's try to do this search, for example, and then get back, tap on the history button. And as you see, now I have the visual search history I've made before, so I can get back to it at any time. And when it comes to circle to search, now you'll see more options under the ellipses like search history and delete the last 15 minutes. Now let's talk about Google search. When you go to the shopping tab, you will see a bigger font for the price and the website name. And when you open a specific product, the visit website button will appear when you scroll down as a floating one at the bottom right corner for easier access. And when you search for images, you will see some new changes as well. The first one is the glowing animation that floats over the image when you open it. Secondly, when you tap on the ellipses and then about this image, it will tell you more information like a version of this image is at least five years old with the web results. And if it's AI generated, it might tell you this information as well. When you tap on the ellipses again, now you have the ability to search with image. So for example, if I want a different color from the same shirt, I can put it over here and it does the same thing as Google Lens, but now you can access it from the search as well. Now let's talk about Google Assistant on Android Auto and now you will see a better and less distracting design. So let me tap on the mic icon. As you see, the animation now shows at the bottom and your words will be transcribed in the same area. But if you have a wider aspect ratio, you might see it on the side instead. And when it comes to replying to your messages with your voice, Android Auto will utilize other areas to avoid floating over your map, which is less distracting as well. Next, Google Drive. The first change is the addition of new filters that will make your search much easier. The first one is called type and here you have plenty of options to choose from like documents, spreadsheets, presentation, etc. You can filter by people and finally the date modified and here you have some presets or you can pick a custom date. These filters were available on the web only, but now they made their way to the mobile version. On iOS, now you have the option to scan documents from the Drive app by tapping on this button. And it has the same auto capture feature we have on Android. And you can change to manual if you want by tapping on this toggle. It will give you some filters, the ability to use the flash and so on. Next, Google Home. And I'm going to only show you one new change. On Wear OS, when you open the Home app, now you have the ability to switch between the Home and Away presence directly from your smartwatch. 
Moving to the wallet app, there are some important updates related to the verification. The first one, if your phone is unlocked for more than three minutes, you will see a banner at the top saying that for security, you need to verify it's you before paying. And once you tap on this button, you have to do a biometric authentication to finish your payment. And the second change is related to the transit payments. When you go to wallet settings, then verification settings, then transit payments, here you can toggle the verification required toggle for the transit payments if you want to use it or not. And finally, Google added a new tile for the digital car key that you can add to your quick settings. Next, Google Translate. The only change I'm going to show you here is the redesigned conversation page. As you see, the microphone will change into a material U shape when you tap on it. And also from here, you can switch between the manual mode, which uses two microphones or the auto mode, which will automatically detect the spoken language and start the translation immediately. Using this chat button will split the screen for each side to see the text better. And when you tap on the gear button here, you have a slider for the text size that has a material three design language with the ability to turn on or off the auto playback. The Pixel Watch app also got its own share of visual tweaks. When you go to notifications, you will see that the watch apps and the phone apps are now separated in two different pages. Plus you have filters at the top to quickly jump to the app you are looking for. The second change is under accessibility and here you will see the material 3 design slider for the font size so that's pretty much it for today those are all the new features i wanted to show you please let me know in the comments if you spotted any new feature in google apps to include in my future episodes but for now thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video